Columns hold the data that we track in our pipelines. In this video, we'll look at a sales pipeline for our wholesale coffee business to explore the three types of columns. Basic columns, people columns, and magic columns. And we'll explain which ones are best for tracking different types of data. We'll start with basic columns, which are customizable so you can track anything you want in your pipeline. You can also choose how you want to enter the information depending on what you're tracking. For example, drop-down menus let you choose one option per cell, so they're good for classifying information like the type of customer or a lead source. Date columns make it easy to pick a date from a calendar, and you can use a checkbox to record whether something is true or false. Tag columns let you choose more than one option so you can track a list of things in one cell, like which products a customer wants to buy. Let's add a new tag column to our pipeline to track the services that each of our leads offers. First, click the arrow next to an existing column name, then scroll down to insert new column. Since a cafe can offer more than one service, we'll track a list of services in a tag column. If it were a drop-down column, I'd only be able to choose one option for each row in the pipeline. Now I'll give our column a name and add the tag options that we can choose from later by double-clicking in one of the cells. We can click Manage Options to add several at once, or we could just create options as we go. Once we have our options loaded, double-click in the cell to start adding tags. You'll notice I always try to set up my columns as drop-down menus, dates, or some other format, rather than freeform text. Freeform columns are good for entering numbers, but it's best to avoid them for other types of information. Here's why. If my team and I were tracking region in a freeform column, we're going to end up with a lot of inconsistency around how we enter the data. And before we know it, we've got three different ways to track the Pacific Northwest. Aside from just looking messy, this makes it impossible to actually use our data in filters or reports, which we'll learn more about later. When we do add a freeform column to track numbers in our pipelines, specify what you're tracking to make sure you get consistent data here, too. That brings us to the last type of basic column, formula columns. You may have noticed that the commission column automatically updated when I entered a deal size. Behind the scenes, we're actually running a formula based on our deal size column. This particular formula does basic arithmetic to calculate a commission, but you can create more complex formulas too. Now that we've covered each type of basic column, let's take a look at magic columns, which all have a sparkle icon next to the column name. The emails and other content that we add to boxes all contain metadata, like timestamps, sender and recipient email addresses, and more. Anytime we add content to a box or update a box in any way, Streak automatically captures that metadata, and you can see it in these magic columns. This gives us a lot of useful information in our pipelines without any extra work. For example, we can see when the last email was sent and from whom, which gives us a clue when we need to follow up with our leads because I can see if I haven't received a reply from somebody in a while or if I owe them an email. We're also tracking how long the box has been in the current stage, so we can tell if it's getting a bit stale and might need some attention. We can automatically track a lot of useful data about our boxes, email history, tasks, and more with magic columns. You can add magic columns at any time to get all of this data, so take some time to explore them all and add some to your pipelines. The third and last type of columns are people columns, which include the assigned to column and contact and organization columns. The assigned to column helps you see who's working on what in your pipeline. This also lets us pull reports for team performance or create a filter to see only boxes that are assigned to me. The contacts and organizations column is how we track people and companies in our pipeline. In this pipeline, each row is a business that might buy our wholesale coffee. We could have multiple contacts at one of the cafes, and we can keep track of them all in this column. 
In our hiring pipeline, each row is an individual person who applied for a job, so there's just one contact per row. But adding them as a contact gives us tools to draft an email, schedule a meeting, make a call, and more directly from our pipeline. Each contact or organization has their own page where we can track their information and all of our team's emails with them. We can also see all of the places where we've added them to a box. In this case, we already saw our contact Joelle in the sales pipeline, and this shows us that she's also in the support pipeline because she wrote in with a question about delivery. When you're adding columns to your pipeline, it's helpful to think backwards about what information is important to you and how you want to track that information. Then take some time to explore which column types are best for the data you need to track. Now that we've looked at the different types of columns you can add to your pipeline, it's time to create your own. We'll show you how in the following lessons.